Enterprise was the very first space shuttle, the first one they built, and they built it to be a test article, but also to be an actual space shuttle. I'm sure the astronauts are very excited, particularly the pilots, you know, they're really gonna fly a vehicle like this and practice these approaches and right, up, right through landing as well, so they were able to land with it. And they did that a number of times and learned so much from the, uh, the aerodynamics and also the way the thermal protection system was gonna behave. We literally got hundreds of proposals. We had three flown space shuttles, shuttles that had actually gone to space, and then we had Enterprise, which was housed down at Dulles in Washington, D.C. I remember when the space shuttle was, when they were retiring them, you know, that was, I was on one of the last missions on Atlantis in 2009. The program ended a couple years later in total, 20, 2011 was done. And uh, what are you gonna do with these things? You know, what's gonna happen to the spaceships? and the decision was made that they're gonna be put in museums. The buildup to um, wondering if we found out we would be a recipient of a space shuttle was crazy. To evaluate all of the applications for shuttles and then come in and recommend to me, the administrator, you know, who should get them. The whole country contributed to this in different ways and we really want to inspire people and young people and people of all ages it really should go to New York. New York could really use this. There was no question in my mind that Intrepid was going to get one. Every day where we, we were preparing and we were going through the matrix of what if we got this one, what if we got that one, what if we got this one, and the call comes in that we did receive one and we received the Enterprise. The shuttle's retirement is bittersweet for all of us, but at NASA, we're also very excited about our future. New York City's Intrepid Seer and Space Museum will get Enterprise, our prototype orbiter that tested the aerodynamics of the craft before it flew into space. And the emotion, certainly that I felt when I got that call initially, was just something I had never felt before in my whole professional career. You could tell the, 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 just the feeling of exuberation from here in the museum came through the phone. The reaction was equally, if not, greater to what the anticipation was. So it was momentous. We were all incredibly excited. You know, I remember we did like a whole th you know, press release and we did a whole event in Hangar 1. We all jumped in the air. I mean, but then I was like, uh-oh, now I really got to get this thing here, you know? It's exciting, but nerve-wracking. <laughs> Enterprise was flown from Dulles into New York and all around Manhattan. NASA flew it into JFK, we towed it across the JFK runway. There was a basin towards the end of the, uh, one of the runways and allow a barge to come in to receive this. Towed the barge through three bridges and over to Weeks Marine Yard, which is in New Jersey. What we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to lift the shuttle onto the flight deck and drop it down right in place of where it was gonna be in the exact configuration. We didn't wanna to have to be playing around with it on the flight deck. So many moving parts that had to come together. It was quite an amazing thing when it all did just happen the way it was planned. Yeah, I had to put out of my mind that it was a priceless artifact that we were moving, and it was just really just looked at as another aircraft, a 70-ton uh, aircraft. When the space shuttle arrived, uh, of course the tail cone was on it, and NASA offered it because they didn't need it. There was only two tail cones made, and these tail cones were actually attached to every single space shuttle at one time or another, because any time they landed in California, and the one time in New Mexico, the vehicles have to be brought back to Florida on top of the 747. The tail cone that is on Enterprise is the last and only tail cone in the world. And I wanted to keep it on Enterprise because I thought it was important. It was part of the, uh, the, the first two test glides of the five uh, test glides they did in 1977. Uh, it actually wore the tail cone on the first, very first flights. This vehicle was the test vehicle, and that's the way it looked for the test. And so people can come here and see that. People of all ages who can come in and go through the pavilion and the exhibit, they can learn about a space shuttle, you know, the different parts of it. Bringing the space shuttle kind of brought us into another decades of history. So it's important to have the historic element there, but it really is just the, the anchor to set the story and look to the future because the kids that come visit the museum, they have to know what their future might be. Kids from everywhere, from Harlem, from Brooklyn, from uh, every borough in New York and every country in the world can come in here and look at some of the photos. 
when you go to a museum like this, or you go to one of the virtual events and you learn about something interesting, it's an opportunity to affect people, to educate them, or maybe even change their lives. And I think I can say this very clearly, it is the most significant artifact, space object that we have in New York City that has become a symbol of New York for people who are visiting, but also part of the fabric of the city for all of us who live here. It's a place that people want to come and, and explore. This gives us an entire opportunity now to speak about how do people go into space today? Where are they going? Where will they be living? What experiments are being done? How is it improving human life as we know it today? And so uh, it was probably for me and in my tenure to date the most significant acquisition in addition to the Intrepid Museum Complex.